Hello there, and welcome to part 3 of my 286 Adventure Series. In this part, we're going to be exploring a brand new desktop, seeing as the IBM PS2 is just giving me way too much frustration. I'm just going to start completely from scratch and build a 286 PC from parts I collected off eBay, and no proprietary like IBM PS2 stuff, just a normal PC compatible 286 system. So now we're going to start by unboxing all the stuff that I've got and go through it and see whether it works or not. And through the magic of jump cuts, we now have a box on our table and a webcam floating above me. Hopefully this is a decent angle. This is just me experimenting with new ways of filming and new ways of doing stuff. So anyway, I was on eBay looking around for 286 computer parts and the one I found was actually all the way from Russia. Um, I found a bunch of other ones, but this seemed to be the best and actually, ironically, the cheapest, even including the shipping from Russia. It seemed to be the most reasonably priced and also came with pretty much everything I need. So, let's see what we got. We have a box. Let's open the box. I need to get a box cutter for a better scissor. That's a different story. There we go. Keep in this side. Yeah, cut box. There we go. Don't know if I cut all the tape yet. A lot of tape here. So close. Yes. There we go. Card. Another card. Another card. And motherboard. And after another jump cut, we will go through all of these different parts. And we're back again. Everything neatly laid out. Let's first start by opening up the motherboard, seeing what we got. Lots of bubble wrap. It's good, it means this survived shipping. It should be perfect and good to go. Or or Ooh. Look at that. That looks really nice. This is a Lucky Star HT12 286 Ford. Um interestingly the CPU on this board is actually soldered onto it, but the 287 is obviously socketed since that was not um it was optional so we have an so you can see that in the camera there an amd 16 megahertz 286 and then an intel i think 10 megahertz 287 um and in case you're wondering this barrel battery here the seller said he took off the old one and this is a new one i don't know how like new or modern it is but hopefully this won't Week since it was indeed replaced. I think this has the max of, I think, 4 megabytes of RAM. These here are also RAM slots. I didn't realize that. I thought they were like cache slots, but this is way older than that. This is, this is a 286. I don't think it's even had L2 cache, so these are, I think, dip RAM slots, and then these are, I think, SIM RAM slots, or forget exactly because I think they look a little bit different than the other RAM, other RAM slots I've seen on boards. Um, this being a 286, the only I.O. on the board is an AT keyboard socket. Everything else has to be done through all of the ISA slots and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 16 bit ISA and 2 8 bit ISA. No VLB because I think VLB requires at least a 486 or maybe a 386, I don't remember. And, yeah, so everything else that we need, including the, um, 
any hard drives, any I.O., anything is going to be with all the additional cards that we have here. So, let's go through those. Let's start this one. This looks to be a video card. I do have some PCI video cards lying around, but I don't have any ISA video cards, so I'm lucky this came with one. This is a Sirius Logic GL, uh, sorry, CL GD5401. I don't know much about this card, but since it's a 286, not probably be doing any too many crazy graphics, and I imagine this can do decent VGA in games, so this is probably fine. Next, we have this is I think the sound card. Yep, this is the sound card. I'm actually pretty excited about this because the sound card is. An ESS audio drive, and it's one of the models I've heard is actually like pretty good for DOS stuff. I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy to get this because it's got a wavetable header, which means I can add a MIDI daughter board to it. It's got an IDE port, which I mean, I don't know if I'm gonna use that. Maybe if I want to use like a CD-ROM drive through it. I think the IDE port has one bent pin on it, but I can fix that easily. This is the ESS audio drive ES1868F. Which I've heard is actually a pretty good card. I, I think this is one of the better DOS sound cards. And then finally, this card is our I.O. card. This card is going to be handling pretty much everything. I don't know anything terribly special about this, but I it's, an, it's just an I.O. card, so it's got um, floppy, IDE, um, serial, parallel, and then additional connectors for another serial and a game port. It should be interesting because this has a game port on it, and the sound card has a game port on it, and I wonder if I can use both. Maybe I can use both at the same time and get two controllers and get some two-player games going. That could be fun. So anyway, now that we have this out, I'm going to get out my test bench, put this on it, and turn on and see what happens hello there and I have the board on my test bench but there's a little little bit of a problem here this isn't actually screwed on to the test bench since this board which maybe is baby AT maybe it's even smaller than that doesn't quite fit line up with any of the mount points any of the standoffs so just sort of sitting on some of the standoffs but I have everything plugged in um, so on this test bench I have uh, modern ATX power supply, but this obviously is an AT board, so connected is this ATX to AT power supply adapter. It seems to work just fine. I've used this in other boards and I've had no problem with it, so I have the video card plugged in and I have an AT keyboard plugged in and I'm just going to turn it on and see what happens. I This should be all I need to get it to power up and at least give me a picture. Oh, and I also have a PC speaker attached, just for fun. Here we go. Oh, and look at that! It's, it's working. It's definitely working. Wait. I'm waiting. Still waiting. Ooh! Hard drive controller failure. Well, that's okay. I didn't connect the hard drive controller. 286, New York processor present. Yeah, it looks right. I didn't attach any of the other cards, so it doesn't have a floppy drive or a hard drive or anything, but it means the board works, and I guess it also means the video card works. So, I guess the next thing is to go get a floppy drive and see if I can just boot up DOS or something on this and see what happens. Back in a sec. And I'm back. I have very crudely connected a floppy drive to the controller card. By crudely, I mean because this floppy drive, the power connector here, is detached from the circuit board and being held on by tape. 
so that probably won't cause a fire. Um, the floppy drive does work, but it looks like I'm going to have to get another one because I really don't like the fact that the power connector is being held on by tape. So anyway, with that connected and a DOS floppy disk in hand, let's see what happens if I turn it on again. The switch. Flip the switch. Is it? Nope. There we go. It is on. Here we go. Oh. What's happening? Try this one more time. On. And... Is it not like the controller card? Is it not like the... janky floppy drive? I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna troubleshoot for a bit. Hang on. Okay, so I've disconnected the floppy drive, left the controller card in though, and let's try it again. What's happening? It was working before, wasn't it? Come on. Maybe I need to put the controller card in a different slot, or maybe I need to find the manual of the controller card and set some of these jumpers on it. Weird. Well, let's try it up the controller card one more time just to make sure I'm not crazy. Uh, Alright, let's turn this off. We can remove the IO card. Which I imagine does work, but I might need to like set some jumpers or maybe I kill it with the weird floppy drive. I don't know. Or maybe that's why, maybe the video card was just not in all the way, because this board isn't actually mounted to anything. So I'm going to move the video card to one of the other IDE slots. And push it on in there. Maybe. Hmm. Yeah, actually, I should actually try to mount this onto something. The problem is, I don't have a case for this yet, so I need to get a proper I AC case, you know, like a 286 case means I need to get a case with a megahertz display and a turtle button and all that and I don't have one of those and those are pretty hard to find on eBay at least for not like 60 bucks plus 60 bucks shipping so alright I'm gonna pause the video fix the board and come back okay I made sure the cards are actually in and seated correctly and now if we try one more time it powers up so, I didn't break anything, I just, you know, since it's not screwed out of the way, since I'm a dumbass, um, you know. Anyway, now it's booting. I don't have the flop drive connected right now, so probably still won't do anything. I just want to see if it says anything about the controller card, or... I wonder if the controller card has, like, its own BIOS or anything special about it. Um, uh, certainly it thinks that it had a hard drive, it has a hard drive attached. I guess it did in the past, and I never went in and changed it. How did I get the BIOS on this thing? Can I just hit delete how much times or F2? Hmm. I need to get like a special like BIOS disk. Oh, there we go. Escape phone on setup. See my setup. Yes. Oh, here we go. Let's set date. It is... Oh, wait. I changed it up. Oh, page up, page down. I should read, shouldn't I? It is June 16th, and the time is 5-11. wonder if this thing will understand what the hell 2019 is. Looks like it does, because it is in fact a Sunday, so at least that seems to be working. Daylight savings. Um, we'll do. I don't remember if it's supposed to be uh, on or off. I'm stupid. I'm going to do that. That's not attached right now. I'm going to try again to attach this and see if I can get it to work. 
VGA card. Yep. Keyboard. Advanced. Oh, look at all these settings here. Boot up sequence. Try booting off our floppy drive first. That sounds good. Um, I don't know what all of these settings do, but the thing looks to be good. Take it one more time. On one megabyte memory test. We do have more than that. Should I turn that on? Turn that on. See what happens. Alright. Here we go. Now we get to wait again. Okay. So that's good, because we don't actually have a floppy drive attached. So, let's try to plug it in again and see if it works. Alright, and we have our floppy drive connected, so let's see what happens if I boot up now. Look at that mempest go. Let's see if we hear our floppy drive do anything. Oh, our floppy drive made some noise. I think it's working. Alright, let's put this in. Booting off of it. It is not. But it was making noise before. Uh, oops, just reboot. See what happens. Alright. And. Still nothing. Well, if I have the BIOS settings wrong, or if I have the floppy drive connected to the wrong side of this floppy cable or something. Um, gonna stop, troubleshoot a little bit, and come back. And we're back, and I think our floppy drive is actually booting now. I just connected to the other end of the floppy cable, one after the fold instead of before the fold, and yeah, look at that. I can boot into DOS. And we can see, oh, I just found the run command in this version of DOS. Weird. F disk is probably not, it's obviously not going to tell us anything because I don't have any hard drives attached. But, at least we know it works. Yeah, we can know the system works. Alright, so now I'm going to connect the sound card and onto the sound card I'm going to add something special. I have a Dream Blaster S2, a MIDI daughter board, which is this teeny tiny little thing and I really like the way this sounds I'm gonna put this onto the brief table header of the sound card and then try to play some MIDI files through it be back in a sec hey and we're back so now I have the sound card connected with the MIDI door board attached to it and I've inserted a floppy disk with a copy of Dosmid on it and as you can see on the screen also a copy of Kenyon.mid so I'm going to see whether this works or not. I don't know if I need to install any drivers or anything for the sound card. I didn't go through the BIOS or anything either, but I imagine the sound card should just be a standard sound card and hopefully just look for the normal general MIDI port and hopefully talk to it. Let's find out. Here we go. Uh, okay, let's try without that. I guess this is the 286, it doesn't have extended memory, so... Organization failure, no OPL2, OPL3 device detected. Okay, that's probably because it's using the, um... OPL2 MIDI software, or OPL2 MIDI emulation mode, because I didn't tell it that it can use general MIDI, so I'll have to figure out how to tell it to do that. What are the flags for this program? Yes. There we go. Let's see what happens. 
XMS slash which one of these do we need? Um we can try MPU, I guess. That should hopefully be I don't know if, I don't know if it's general MIDI or I don't know if this card does how it does MIDI, but I guess we can just try that. P U equals I think 330 is the standard port, so let's try that. Oh. MPU doesn't answer. Darn. I might need to set up a driver or set up the set blaster variable or something to get it talk to the card correctly. Or I can just try other random flags in this program and see what happens. Oh, I forgot no XMS. It's gonna crash at me. Yep. Alright, well, looks like I need some more um, research on how to set up this sound card in DOS. I think I can just download drivers for it, maybe just run them in memory here without having to actually install DOS, so I'm gonna try that. I wanna hear this thing make some sound. Be right back. Hey guys, one final thing. So, I couldn't quite get the MIDI player to work with the sound card. Seems like what I need to do is connect a hard drive, which I should have one lying around, install DOS onto the hard drive, and then install the sound card drivers onto that, so that way it sets up the blaster and all the other environment stuff, then the sound card should work. I'll probably do that in the next part of this video. In the next part of this video as well, I will hopefully have a case by then and put this into a case and show off more things I can do with it. But for now, there's one thing I do want to show off in this machine, because it's just, there's one, there's one fun thing to show off in all machines that I have, and that's, uh, okay, that's weirder. Anyway, I'm going to pause the video and do one more quick jump cut because that's a weird error. And we're back, and as I was saying, I just wanted to load up one more final thing of this machine just to show that it works, and then in the next part, I will hopefully put this into a case and show off the sound card and the MIDI board on the sound card and show off what else I can do with this thing. Try connecting game ports, try connecting hard drives, CD-ROM drives, and all that sort of stuff. So, But for now, I'm just going to boot up into DOS one more time and see what happens. So, a few people are wondering why I'm using PC DOS 3 because the DOS 6 disk I have won't boot on this, it pretty much crashes as it tries to initialize a CD-ROM drive, which it doesn't have. And I have a free DOS disk, and that's what I was using before and got that weird error. And free DOS does work, but free DOS doesn't really like 286 that much, so PC DOS 3 seems to work fine. I'll have to pick a version of DOS to actually install on this, and I'll probably stick with 3, or I might be able, might be able to install 6 if I don't use like CD-ROM drivers or if I do have to connect the drum, I have to read, but anyway, let's load up the thing I was trying to load up before. And that is Planet X3 by the 8 bit guy, which should run just fine on 286. Um, I don't have any sound cards attached right now, so I'm just going to use. Or I do, but it doesn't want to work, so I'm just going to use the PC speaker, which is attached. And this should actually be running in the, hopefully, VGA mode. Yeah! Yay! Yeah, it's so pretty. It's in a 286, and it seems you're running just fine on this system, even though the system isn't, you know, the fastest thing of all, but it does work. Can I build, let's build something, even though this is not probably where I want to put it, but let's make it do something. <laughs> what units do I have? That's doing its thing. Oh, I like 
I forget how to play this game. That is silly. Anyway, you can see the computer works and everything is good to go. I'm hopefully going to get a case with a turbo button on it and a megahertz display and put this in there instead of just sitting on the bench like this. Anyway, thank you guys.